like a vintage chair. It looks like 40s, 50s, or 60s. It's in really rough shape. So I got this chair to fill an empty space in an office that I had. Okay. And the I closed the office, and I could not part with these chairs. There's two of them. I bought them for 10 bucks at a thrift store. Nice. So what I would say <laughs> is this. So this um, finish on the wood is sort of, we kind of call it like no man's land, because okay. it's not dark enough to be elegant, and it's not bleached enough to feel sort of time-worn or, or antique. And so the easiest thing and the most inexpensive thing, since you spent 10 bucks on these, would be to paint the frame yourself. Keep it neutral, Ooh. because I think that you don't want to tie yourself into like an orange frame or something that you might get bored with. But either a pale gray would be beautiful on the frame, or a white. Paint the wood parts. Okay. Um, and you yeah, but if, if it gets on the fabric, who cares? Who cares? Right, right. Prime it, seal it, and then um, you'll be in really good shape. In terms of the fabric um, for the chair, what I would suggest is doing something with a little bit of life to it that feels a little bit mid-century. So like a small pattern, like a small scale pattern is great. There are instructions online on how to upholster a chair. I can do a seat with a stable gun. I cannot do this myself. <laughs> so send a photo around to a couple of like mom and pop upholstery places okay. in your town and just say like, how much would you charge me for this and how much fabric do I need? Okay. And it shouldn't really cost more than a couple of hundred dollars, maybe $300 to do. Um, but buy the fabric all at the same time, even if you can't afford to redo both at the same time, because you have to make sure the fabric matches. Hello. How are you? Uh, what's the story of your rocking chair? So this was my grandmother's, who was Aww. my absolute best friend, and we put loads of rocking mileage on that chair when I was little. Wow. Um, she passed away about six years ago. It is definitely the centerpiece of my living room, but needs some updating to kind of go with my house, but still remain functional. Yeah. How, how would you describe your house? modern farmhouse-y. Okay, perfect. this yeah. is perfect. I actually love this chair, and I love this story behind it, so I think it's just a really easy update. The first thing I would do would a simple coat of paint. I would take a white, something like this. I think this is um, Chantilly Lace. It's a really beautiful color. Um, give it a couple coats, really easy update. The next thing would do, I would create a really nice, simple cushion, something subtle, I don't think I'd actually do a lot of pattern or anything. I'd just like to do a beautiful <laughs> Belgian linen, something like that. And then I would also play around with the idea of creating um, some round pads for the uh, handrails. That's a great idea. And there's patterns for Thank that you. online that you leave the strings and then you tie it underneath. And you just tie it underneath. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so this. It's, it's farmhouse. It's very it's French modern. country farmhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that, that would be really chic. Yeah, that's been on my deck for a while, as you can tell. But my oh, husband wow. used to sit on it when he was alive and he passed away quite a few years ago. Really? And it means a lot to me. But the cats have ruined it. What's the rest of your home like? What's the. Uh, I think I'm rock and roll. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Barbara, I'm sure I am. Yeah, it's kind okay. of cool. So I actually think that this chair is great for that. And, and the idea of kind of repurposing it and bringing it to life, the lines are really chic. I love yeah. the, you know, the silhouette of the round. I think to actually play into the playfulness of the piece, right. um, I would reupholster it right out of the bat. Okay. Um, and I think I would actually recommend you do something like... The fur? Fun. Yeah. I love that. Oh! A furry chair. Yeah. Whether it's uh, really cool. something like yeah. this flicati or yeah. a shirling, a lot of texture, because with this round silhouette, it's going to really play oh, into it. Good. And then, to be honest with you, I kind of like the patina I of do the too. legs. I think it actually yeah. works for the piece. Yeah. But if you don't, then I would paint it something like a high lacquer black, black. or a high lacquer oh, gray. What are you going to do to this one? Whose chair Who's is this? this? That's my chair. One of my coworkers was like, I have the perfect chair for you. But it's not really my style. What do you consider your style? I'm more into like purple and fun patterns. Plain black leather is like kind of office y. So I want more like 21 year old. Yeah, it's actually handsome and it's in great shape. Um, the wood finish bugs me and I think it looks a little bit cheap, like it came from some weird catalog. So I would definitely paint all of this out white. And then, you know, one of the things that we do all the time, it's not worth spending the money on this to redo it in the black leather. I wouldn't suggest you send this to an upholsterer. It's a really hard, very specific job. It's not straight lines. It's a bunch of, you know, curved cuts and things like that. So what you could do yourself is get on Etsy, find like a great vintage pattern of a fabric or even a really cool scarf. Um, you know, a, a knit scarf or a printed pattern scarf with purple in it or whatever it is, and, and lay it over the top and then just sew it, like cut the pattern. So it's almost like you're putting like a belt around, yeah. the, around the whole back of it. The seat you never have to worry about. If it's got a white frame, I think the black will look cool, and that's what I would do. Yeah, thank you. That's easy. Yeah.